CloudDB, shaping your new normal. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the 2021 APEC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by APACO UC. This year, our event will be the biggest one ever done with 144 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops, and hands-on labs from 100 different speakers over 18 days. Also, it will cover sessions in four ling different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can this way you will be able to have access to our replace until December 30. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups in Java user groups, our 16 of them that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Groundbreakers and our main sponsor, CloudDB. Now, for today's session, Oracle Multi-Tenant, a new standard live demo by Shandan Tawani. Please, if you have any questions during this session, Make use of the chat window in the right lower corner of your screen, and Shandan will be answering all your questions by the end of the, uh, the session. If you have any issues during this, the, the presentation, please feel free to use in the same chat window, and I will, I will try to help you the best I can. Now, without any further ado, I would like to leave you with this amazing session from Shandan Tanwin, Tanwani. Shandan, the room is yours. Yeah, thank you, Francisco. Thank you. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be a part of this uh, Groundbreakers APEC Virtual Tour 2021. And uh, uh, this is my second session, uh, actually. So I'm very excited to have this uh, a live demo and multi tenant environment, which is the new standard from the Oracle. So this is the safe harbor statement. So uh, just to introduce myself, I'm uh, belonging and the country of India, Pune, uh, India and Pune city. And uh, I have started uh, working with the Oracle 7 and uh, currently the latest version that I'm working on the Oracle 19C. I'm performance tuning certified expert and uh, also I'm writing blogs and you can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn and you can reach out to me at uh, any point of time. So uh, to start with, actually, uh, there are uh, you know key business imperatives in any organization. That is the challenges uh, we can talk about. The first challenges is to you know accommodate the new environment, new uh, databases, provisioning, the maintenance of the existing databases, and upgradation of the existing database and environment. So these are the very key challenges, you know, every now and then, uh, you know, we have the new database version and this is a part of the, you know, challenge that every organization is uh, having to maintain the database versions as well as to upgrade to the latest version of the database. And uh, simultaneously, the organizations have the requirement of the performance stability and they, they need the scale of their environment and also they require the high ability of the, uh, their production databases, right? So that, that is a key requirement for, uh, you know, you must have your production database as well as you must have the, you know, DR environment for any failure that is happening to you. And uh, today organizations are uh, working on, you know, it's a lot of pressures they have. So that is to have the, you know, do more with less, uh, you should be the, you know, your technology should be the cheaper and faster. You, uh, the environment should be run, you know, 24 by seven and you, you have the service available 24 by seven. So all these key business requirement are, uh, you know, today's organizations are uh, facing this uh, challenges requirement and pressure simultaneously uh, for their environment, for their IT uh, infrastructure and environment. So Oracle solution is the multi-tenant architecture for this actually for the database environment and particularly for the, you know, database consolidation and environments. So this is the new standard that is Oracle has started multi-tenant architecture from the 12C onwards. And we have this, you know, many enhancement happens uh, during this uh, 12C to the 19C uh, journey. And now we have all already uh, uh, announced in the month of June of the 21C. Uh, and we have there are many enhancement happens in the multi-tenant environment. So let's understand first what is this multi-tenant architecture. And going forward, I will showcase you 
for the DBA perspective, how they can you know manage this environment and what are those key features uh, they can do uh, you know uh, have those uh, features available with them to ease off their you know their life will become easy with the multi tenancy actually, and I will showcase you in that live demo. So very first thing uh, uh, let's understand uh, you know multi tenant architecture we uh, you know multi tenant architecture will have the uh, container database just i'm highlighting here as this one is the container database oh i'm sorry yeah. so this one is the container database and uh, these are the pluggable databases so each pluggable database have the you know common cpu and memory power and common background processes for that so each pluggable database has their own uh, data files, system file, undo, redo, everything has their own uh, data files for that. Okay, so that is the multi tenant architecture, and those are you know isolated with each other. So no one can you know go to the you know another PDB, even uh, if the you know sys DBS privileges are defined as per the PDBs as well. Okay, so this is the multi tenant architecture that uh, we have. What advantage you will get with the multi tenant architecture? Very first advantage is the consolidation. You will get the multiple environment uh, that you can consolidate in one environment. So say, for example, if you have the multiple VMs for the databases and multiple physical servers of the databases that you can consolidate in one environment. How you can consolidate those environment? Say, for example, when uh, there are many, uh, you can say, uh, servers which is you know uh, utilizing your 30% of CPU power or 40% or 50% of CPU power, and rest of the CPU power is not utilized much. So that you you are consolidate if you consolidate those environment into one and you assign the CPU and memory uh, with the resource manager to that particular PDB, it will help you to achieve the consolidation in one environment. Right. And also, it will be uh, very easy to uh, easy to you know uh, uh, handle one environment rather having the multiple VMs, multiple physical servers, and you know multiple database versions as well. So administration of those is really uh, hectic for uh, DBAs. Their entire life goes into the you know managing those environments and databases. So multi tenant will you know gives you the you know uh, manage many as one and you are managing many databases as a one database. Uh, you can upgrade patch database at once only and, and all the PDBs will be upgraded. Right? Another part is the provisioning. So uh, you can, and what happens nowadays, we are uh, provisioning the database, like you know, we run the DBCA command and uh, it, it will take a lot of time to you know uh, create the database. But what if you know I can just run one create pluggable database database name? That's it, and you are good to go with the new uh, pluggable database. And one command will suffice to create a database in within a fraction of the seconds. All right, so that will you know help you to achieve fast provisioning, and also you can move from one pluggable uh, one CDB to another CDB, and uh, that is also become the very easy task. So you can relocate PDB, you can refresh your uh, uh, production database to the dev database with one single command, and uh, you are good to go with that. And last is not the least, but the cloud enabler. If you uh, if you are moving to the cloud. Multi tenant will really help you to achieve that, and I will showcase you. You can directly re, uh, you can relocate your pluggable database from on premise to the cloud uh, in one single command, and that will you know uh, you can achieve with the cloud. Uh, this SaaS architecture you can achieve in uh, into that, and also you can have the database as a service uh, on premise as well. If you are not on the cloud, you can achieve this uh, uh, database as a service uh, in your on premise by having this multi tenant architecture. Lecture, right so uh, let's uh, understand first of all what are the use cases of the multi tenant many uh, dbas and many uh, you know architects uh, team leads uh, it heads are really wondering why we should go with the multi tenant and what are the benefits they will get actually so i have a couple of use cases here i just want to uh, uh, showcase you very first uh, use case is uh, it is a complementary of the schema based consolidation left hand side you can see there are multiple schemas and right hand side you can see there are multiple pluggable databases that you have the benefit of the you know multiple pluggable databases is that you can have the each individual uh, 
pluggable database for each individual individual module or the application or the schemas that you, that i can say so that you can maintain it separately and the, the any uh, code changes happen any uh, script that you want to run uh, bug fixing happens that particular pdb can affect only so that you can have the you know uh, you can bifurcate your environment with the multiple pdbs and also you can also uh, have the pdb level uh, uh, you can say sga memory allocation your uh, cpu and io resource allocation at pdb level if any one module or application is you know taking a uh, lot of resources you can allocate that much resources to that particular uh, pdb rather you know other pdbs you can have the less resources for uh, uh, their operation part right that bifurcation you can do with the pdbs but that is not applicable in the schema based consolidation in your environment right now right so this is one of the good example of the you know you can uh, segregate your application with the multiple pdbs another complementary uh, part of the you know it's the vms that will help you to achieve that say for example you have the you know 196 gb of ram is available in one uh, server with two sockets maximum you can allocate the 16 uh, vms with you so that is a limitation that uh, you know one vm that uh, accommodate only 16 vms because it will require a minimum ram of the 6 gb right but what if you know i can adopt the multi tenant environment so that i can have the with the same vm i can have multiple pluggable databases right so uh, this you can accommodate many many pdbs over there so uh, with the commodity hardware you you will have the 252 pluggable databases you can accommodate and with the exadata server you can have the uh, 4096 uh, pluggable database you can have in one container uh, database right so this is a complementary for the vms actually and also uh, i want to uh, uh, you know share with you that you can consolidate multiple environments multiple versions of the database you can you know convert into the uh, you can upgrade to the 19c as a pluggable database so that you can have the similar uh you can do the standardization of the database and you can have the same version of the database that is a very critical part that you can uh, you know standardize everything uh into the oracle database also uh and uh, you can accommodate more databases like uh, uh you may have the open source rdbms or the other uh, database that you have you can convert those database into the oracle database in in the pluggable database and you can standardize entire your database stack of, of your uh, organization into the oracle 19c uh, i can say right so this one is the uh, actually you, you can do with this and also uh, you can achieve the microservice architecture uh, each microservice can have their uh, own database so similar way you can have the own pluggable database uh, for each microservice architecture right i'm moving a little fast that uh, i want to showcase you more about the multi tenant architecture and you can achieve this the saas implementation into your on premise as well you can do the database as a service uh, with the multi tenancy because it is a one single command that you can uh, you know achieve the new provision of the database decommission of the database you can have the you know snapshot of the database refresh your production database to the uh, dev database that one single single command that you can achieve with the you know entire so entire database life cycle management you can achieve with this multi tenancy and then uh, the sharding is one of the you know uh, will help you to achieve the you know distribute your data architecture so multi tenant will also help you to you know reside multiple shard ins to the multiple pdbs and across the geographical location so that is possible with the multi tenant architecture next part is i want to uh, uh, talk about you know uh, how this you know help you to uh, provision new environment say for example this is your uh, container database and you have the seed pdb what if you want to uh, uh, create one more pluggable database okay just uh, you know you you are just firing the create pluggable database database name and it will uh, it's done actually basically it is creating a database from your seed pdb right and also if you want to you know clone your database you can easily clone in the same container or if you want to you know uh, clone the database into the multiple uh, container that also possible and you can create a snapshot of your pluggable database so that is become actually a very fast fast uh, you know provisioning of your database rather it is a clone snapshot or provisioning the new database as compared to the our old uh, we can say uh, uh, methods of creating the database right 
uh, there are many use cases uh, actually. Uh, so what actually the multi-tenant container database and its architecture looks like, right? So let's see actually, first I, I want to showcase you the uh, architecture of the multi-tenancy. Left hand side, you can see the common background processes. Uh, all the background processes are common across the all pluggable databases. On top side, you can see the system global area SJ, which is uh, which is a common for all the pluggable uh, database, and uh, and and below that you can see the container uh, CDB, and this container CDB is having the common uh, sys system tamp user undo table space, and they have the you know uh, regular uh, pluggable database, and each pluggable database has their own sys six tamp user and undo table spaces. So this is how the uh, architecture looks like of the uh, your container database, and you can uh, you know allocate uh, fix SGA for each pluggable database also. That is a uh, uh, that that you can do with the each pluggable PDBs by just setting the you know init parameters uh, for your this container database. Next part, uh, you might have you know a few questions about uh, this. So uh, these are the uh, you know common questions when I uh, go to the customers and you know uh, talk with the many people around this. So multi-tenant adoption is available in standard edition or not? Yes, it is available. Does this multiple copies of the alert log for the applicable database? No, it's a common one. And uh, there are the any background processes for P1 S1 like that? It is the common process of that actually. And what are about the separate control file and read log files for, is required for each PDB? No, actually this is the common uh, you know control file and uh, uh, read log file for entire container database. Can multiple CDBs run on the same server? So this question comes, you know, uh, often because uh, that is a license implement, uh, implementation on on top of it. So uh, answer is yes, you can create multiple container database into your the server and you can uh, on top of it you can create a multiple pluggable database on that right and the similar way uh, you can you know uh, give the minimum sizing of the each pdbs yes you can give the minimum size of the you know each pluggable database accordingly so resource manager will help you to achieve that and there is a separate and usable space also, there are some backup uh, related questions. Uh, I often come, do I take to backup, uh, you know, entire uh, CDB or I can take a PDB level backups. You can take an entire uh, CDB level backup, but you, if you want to restore it at PDB level, that is possible. If you want to do the point in time recovery for at PDB level, that is possible. And uh, uh, individual PDB restoration also can be possible, right? And if uh, multi-tenant is supporting rack, Yes, it is supporting the rack and high ability, and also it is you know uh, supporting the PDB level uh, you know failover and switchover. Okay, so there are many administration uh, features which is uh, part of this. Uh, you can plug and plug PDB hot clone flash uh, flashback PDBs AWR at PDB level. So these are all administrative features which is you know you can have with each pluggable database i want to showcase you today is uh, you know very first thing uh, i will showcase you hot clone i will showcase you uh, refreshable pdb online pdb relocation i will do the three demos live demos uh, in my next uh, you know slides okay uh, so we'll showcase you how easy it is because many of the administrators Traders are, you know, um, afraid of uh, uh, adopting this multi-tenant architecture. So I just want to say them that, you know, this multi-tenant architecture is very, very easy to handle that, and very few commands that you have to run it. And this, uh, once you are adopting it, it will be easy for to manage, you know, entire uh, container database and pluggable databases. Okay. So let's first understand in the graphical uh, way how the PDB hot clone is work. Here I'm just uh, saying you the, you know, prod CDB, which I have the, you know, pro PDB one as a, my production database. And if, what if I want to clone it in my development environment? Okay, it is just, uh, you know, I'm just cloning a one PDB to another PDB. That too, it's a online. Okay, no need of uh, for the downtime actually. Earlier, uh, if I go back to the, you know, uh, 12C R1. So 12C R1, uh, when we have the, this feature, it was the, you know, you must have to 
mount your PDB actually, and then you can do the hot clone. Uh, then you can do the clone actually. Uh, but from 12.2 onwards, you can perform the uh, cloning online while your PDB is running. That we call as a hot clone. Okay. So let's see, means uh, this how the stuff work uh, with the live demo. Uh, I just want to showcase you how this will work actually. So uh, say for uh, here in the left left hand side, you can see uh, I have uh, uh, two actually. Uh, I have this Pro PDB one, which is read write mode, right? And here on the right hand side, you can uh, see I have a Dev PDB one, and let's have the perform the PDB hot clone. Right, so uh, I'm just uh, you know uh, creating a database link that is you know connect with my pro production database, and the database is link created, and then I will just firing a one command that is a create pluggable database PDB hot clone from this prod link, and it will create entire uh, you know database or uh, online. So how the stuff actually work uh, behind the scene? Okay, you may wonder this uh, means uh, how this is actually behind the scene is working. So when we run the create pluggable database command, we do parallel scan of the data file and it will read each block and transfer from the you know source database to the target database. Now you may wonder, uh, uh, you may have the you know question like uh, what about those ongoing transaction which are the you know happening in the target database, which are still not part of the data files, right? The answer is we uh, we ship the redos and apply in the target database so all your current transaction will ship there right so but there may be uh, some uh, committed and some uncommitted transaction how to tackle that the answer is uh, the undo segments is used to uh, used to uh, use the same to roll back your uncommitted transaction right so uh, here you can see the uh, uh, the process is completed and we have the you know uh, database is in the mount stage and when we open this uh, alter database uh, open command at the same time it will you know read all the redos uh, from the you know target database and it will apply to your uh, this uh, uh, target database actually right so now it's my pdb ht clone is up and running so this is how the hot clone happens and you can see this is how easy it is and you can clone any database from one container to another container at any point of time right with the single command so let's move ahead uh, with the uh, next actually uh, you can clone uh, we have already seen this actually in earlier slide uh, how do you you can fast clone of the database you can you know clone P pdbs into this within the same cdb actually within the same cdb right uh, we have seen in a demo is like we have the two containers and we are moving uh, we are cloning one database to the another container Right. Well, similar way you can clone from the remote control that we have seen uh, right right away in uh, our uh, demo. And also, if you have the non-container database like 11G, uh, we have the you know single instance architecture. Similar way, you can create a single instance architecture for your uh, for the 12C, 12C R1, R2, 19C as well. And you can move it to the you know pluggable database. That is also possible using the clone methods. Right. So also uh, this will help you to choose. The next part is I want to showcase you the refreshable PDB. Say for example here, uh, uh, just want to showcase you the in, uh, in this diagram, this how the pro production CDB will you know uh, have the refresh of the uh, same database. So here you can see the pro CDB is having this pro PDB one database, and we have the refresh database over there only when we create this refresh database okay so we just need to you know give the word refresh uh, at the time of creation of this plug behind the scene it will uh, create uh, behind the scene it will do the you know hot clone only but it will uh, you know keep this database as a refresh mode so whatever changes that is applied over the period of time from you know uh, your production database those changes only will you know apply to your uh, this refreshable database so that only the changes is applied over there no need to apply all, all over the transaction uh, again and again and this refreshing is uh, you can maintain is like you know uh, five minute uh, refresh after a 10 minute refresh or a uh, 
one hour or uh, you know after a 24 hours of refresh that you can do that manual also you can do and automatic refresh also you can do on top of it and with the refresh actually this uh, refresh database will be in the uh, mom state okay you cannot uh, you know open it in uh, read write mode you can open it read only mode to view the transaction but you cannot open it the read write mode if you open it in a read write mode then all the your refresh mode is gone because the scn is ma uh, was maintaining over there will, will it be gone but what if you want to use this uh, refresh database you can create a multiple snapshot of those and those snapshot you can open it in read write mode right so that you can have the you know multiple developers can use the your snapshot of this database and they can uh, do multiple ways they can do the bug fixing they can do the new development out of it right that you can do so let's see how it will works in the uh, real time i want to showcase you uh, how this will work so right inside you can see my screen right um, let's have the refresh demo over there and uh, if you see here i'm uh, using the refresh mode manual this actually i'm uh, firing the command additionally apart from the you know create uh, pluggable database database uh, name right refresh mode manual you can do the refresh mode automatic and give the time after five minutes 10 minutes or a, a one hour of time okay right? so behind the scene actually this is the hot clone of your uh, database uh, it is doing your hot clone and when the, once it is done and uh, you can you know open it in a read uh, read only mode and you can see the transaction over there right so you, you can see here it is in the mount state uh, now and uh, uh, you can open it in read only mode uh, you can see that you know the select uh, last refresh uh, from this happens uh, it is the SCA number that you can see and uh, also you can see here the you know the database name pluggable database and, and the refresh mode is the manual you can see here right so this one is the manual mode now so uh, let's uh, you know uh, mm, uh, set into the uh, i am setting this environment to the uh, refresh container and see uh, what are those uh, you know the tables are available uh, over there right so here you can see the there is a you know cbd table is already there and uh, uh, it's a part of that okay i'm just closing it and uh, you know moving it back to the uh, refreshable pluggable database so it is doing actually the refresh uh, of your uh, database which is i have uh, you know uh, did the many changes or uh, that is in the part of uh, this actually so you can see all the changes that is happened to uh, this and uh, the refresh uh, is happens online so whatever the changes is made over there uh, you can see the those changes into the container database right so similar way uh, like in another uh, uh, it is uh, simple to you know refresh your database at any point of time let's move to the online pdb relocation so this one is a part of uh, you know uh, say for example you have the on premise container database and you want to move to the cloud okay and over the cloud you have the container database and what if uh, you know uh, you do not require any downtime for that so online pdb relocation will help you to achieve that without any downtime you can move your database to the uh, over the cloud or I can say if on-premise then you, uh, you also can over the cloud or on-premise both are applicable for this so let's see in graphical way how just it will work uh, it will you know clone the database it will uh, clone the database to the cloud and all the connection are redirect from your uh, on-premise to the cloud and on-premise database will be deleted over there and it will be dropped actually from the on-premise and it will reside only to the cloud actually so this is how the on uh, pdb on relocation will work on top of it so let's see how this actually work uh, in uh, uh, actually so let me create here uh, uh, for the one more test database i'm going into the root container and i'm running in the uh, I'm creating one more database that is a test database. So create pluggable database test admin user and PDB admin identified by PDB admin. 
This is the simple command that I'm using to create one more database. And you can see here it is uh, created now and mounted as well. So let's open it in uh, uh, open mode, right? So once it is done, uh, you can see it is uh, open in the read-write mode, right? So I'm showing a uh, show PDBs, okay? I'm just uh, copy paste. I'm just you know copying this content because I want to showcase you what happens behind the scene when we relocate it and what happens to this actually the production database, right? So in this part, uh, just now you can focus on the right hand side that you know I'm uh, creating a test database actually, okay? And I have used this word relocate. You can see the last uh, word is the relocate. So this is what is the just a sing single command and just I'm modifying, you know, the last content of the word. Uh, in earlier, I have used the refresh manual. Now I'm using the relocate. Rest of, rest of the command is, you know, the same as it is. So nothing to, you know, uh, remember more things, nothing to have worry about to, you know, managing the commands over there. It's a simple command that you can work on that. Now you can see the database is uh, in the mount stage, right? So uh, just let's now open this database because our database is now created over there. Okay, but it is now residing in the both the place. You can see in the left hand side in the production database, it's a test uh, one and in the dev database also, that is a test one. But what if, you know, uh, I, I will, uh, you know, open it. Okay, what happens behind the scene and how the stuff actually works. So I'm opening this database, right? So here I'm just, you know, uh, uh, showcasing you what happens to this database. So when you issue the, you know, this command, it will execute the hot clone and, you know, source PDB will, uh, you know, original location. So that is done. And at the time of, you know, uh, doing this open, uh, actually it, uh, it will showcase you, you know, moving from all the connection from this database to the another database. It is applying all the, you know, uh, content to those database. Now you can see this database, uh, you know, test is a mount uh, stage, right? So this is the, in the mount state right now. So if, what if I can, you know, uh, do the again show PDBs here, uh, it is a still in mount set. So all our, the, you know, changes are moving towards the, uh, test database in your development area, right? So still it is in mount stage, uh, changes are applying, yeah, it is the redos are applying over there. And see, once it is, uh, you know, this command operation is completed, you can see there is no more actually uh, here, uh, database. You can, uh, test database is gone from the production one, right? You can see there is no production database now over there. And if I here showcase you, the test database is open in read on uh, read write mode. So this is how the you know uh, uh, PDB relocations actually uh, work. Uh, what actually this is steps to complete is uh, there are two transaction uh, you know uh, transactionally consistent copy of the PDBs is exist in your uh, production database and in your dev database here in my demo. So one source of the CDB and one uh, you know is a target uh, CDB that can have. And during the operation, transaction continues uninterrupted on the source PDB and user or application connected to the source PDB are unaware of uh, this operation which is happening. They will face some delay in uh, when they are firing any query because the connections are moving from uh, you know your uh, source database to the target database. So the PDB, you know, uh, it will help you to understand what are the, you know, CSN markers as applies and what are the undo uh, is required to complete all. And it will do the, you know, media recovery to satisfy the implicit and the SCN marker. And when the media recovery is, uh, you know, completed, your target database will open and the PDB service are, you know, registered with your listener. So listener changes that you need to make uh, as a, your uh, prerequisite you can you know uh, use the allow multiple redirect listeners can uh, equal to yes this parameter that you need to you know add into your listener file and the uh, listener file actually so that will you know take care of all the connections which are you know uh, uh, which are on or connected from the source database and it will gradually move to the next available node that is your uh, uh, target database so this is how actually uh, all the uh, online relocation happen.
right? I hope uh, you got this point and uh, let's move uh, to the multi-tenant architecture, how you can apply the patch upgrade and backups and DR uh, for this multi-tenant environment. There are many questions, uh, you know, regarding how do I uh, take a backup of this? Okay, so uh, you can take, a, you know, uh, entire uh, container backup into your uh, you know backup environment and if you want to do the recovery for any particular pdb that you can do the point in time recovery with the pluggable database level also uh, to simplify the you know patching and upgrading you can do the you know uh, uh, in place upgrade you can entire your uh, pluggable database can be upgraded over time and also if you want to upgrade any uh, any particular pdbs from uh, you know uh, patching your uh, database from 19.4 in in this scenario left hand side and right hand side 19.10 if you want to move that just you know you move from one uh, container to another plug it uh, unplug it and plug it over there and run the upgrade command that's it uh, and you you are good to uh, have the you know new patch applied over there Right. Similar way uh, upgrades is happens every uh, you know everything at once. In left hand side you can see the you know below the container database is upgraded. All other databases are upgraded. If you want to you know uh, go step by step to upgrade your database, right hand side you can see the uh, unplug it, plug it, and upgrade it. So this these are the you know different techniques that you can patch and upgrade your database. And uh, uh, there are many questions, you know, uh, I uh, come across that, uh, how do I, you know, move from non-CDB to CDB architecture, right? Say, for example, here in, uh, uh, you have the database of, you know, 11.204, and uh, there is an auto upgrade tool, which is very good tool is available to move to the, you know, your database to the 19C. So once you are moved to the 19C database, uh, which is the non-container database, and then this database, you can, you know, plug into the, container database so this is the second step that you have to you know move from non container to the container database and similar way once you are uh, into that uh, you can run this non cdb to pdb sql and you are part of this uh, container database itself now what if you know i want to move back to my uh, 19.5 to 11.204 what if i want to you know fall back uh, after this activity i don't want to go for the 19c because of some issues with the application which is not having uh, you know uh, that application was uh, work right so you cannot uh, you know go back to the 11 to 4 uh, like the fallback strategy earlier we will have but what you can do you can use the uh, data pump technology to export import or you can use the oracle golden gate to move back to your entire you know database to the uh, uh, your uh, uh, older version okay uh, once you are moved to the 19 uh, the database with the pluggable it is not actually the upgrade actually it is the migration okay so this portion is called is the migration it is not your upgradation okay so uh, this is uh, called actually uh, you are moving from one uh, instance to another so if you want to uh, you know go back you can go back from this to this but not uh, from this to this right so this uh, fallback strategy you need to uh, apply for that flashback grp will not work uh, in this scenario in this scenario it will not work So uh, multi-tenant with uh, the isolation and uh, the security uh, part, uh, many of, uh, you know, we are very afraid about uh, uh, security. How do we apply the security on the database? Uh, many organizations uh, have the separate database and there are uh, separate, uh, you know, keys uh, they are applying. They have the TD applicable on that, reduction applicable on that. How everything is maintained, how the users are maintained into the pluggable database okay so uh, we have the you know access control uh, mechanism for each pluggable database so that you can have the you know each user have their uh, own uh, user id password you can have the lockdown profiles over there and uh, those are you know separated with that and also db nest is help you to achieve the you know separate uh, your processes at the os level so that each PD, uh, pdbs can you know uh, have their own processes over there and also it will prevent unauthorized admin access because each pluggable database can have their own 
uh, DBS and application DBS, infrastructure DBS, that those are segregated. And similar way, uh, when it is applies to the transparent uh, data encryption, each pluggable database have their own keys and it is maintained separately, right? And also the container database have their own separate key for that so that you can uh, have the you know uh, different keys for each uh, pluggable database and also you can do the resource I isolation you can have the different uh, you know neighbors uh, which are uh, you know noisy neighbors which is uh, uh, actually affecting your services you can bifurcate them you can have the you know uh, allocate the uh, minimum cpu uh, minimum io minimum sga to your each pluggable database and those pluggable database can uh, you know work on that part and you can do the you know with the resource manager to apply all those changes right so uh, uh, how do you inherit uh, the you know isolation with the uh, pluggable database so you can have the you know pluggable database and dedicate it which is you know run on the rack you can have the separate services for each pluggable databases so that your connections are you know separated for that and each uh, application and module use the separate connections over there and files as we seen in the you know architecture each and every pluggable database has their own uh, uh, user files they have on the uh, temp table space they have on uh, the undo table space so each table space are separate for each pluggable databases okay so uh, at the last, actually, uh, I want to say uh, to conclude this, actually, the multi-tenant environment, uh, the multi-tenant, which is, you know, this architecture will gives you uh, the lot of benefits and it will deliver the, you know, uh, savings in all the categories, I can say, the utilization of the spare uh, capacity of the server, share, uh, overhead of shares, okay, and that you can, you know, create a snapshot, manage many as well everything that you can with this multi-tenancy which is a part of your oracle database and uh, with this actually i want to say uh, this multi-tenant architecture will help you to achieve many things so here in this summary actually i have mentioned uh, you uh, i have bucketed the advantages and benefits for you and your organization in three ways that is your resource utilization operational benefits and the cost saving right so these are uh, i don't want to highlight any each one of this because all are very much important and uh, all are very much important to you as well as your organization to uh, reduce the cost improve your uh, operations and utilize your resources right so uh, with this, actually, I also want to say that multi-tenancy from 19th onwards, the new announcement that is happens uh, uh, is that you can use three pluggable database uh, free of cost. There is no additional licenses required to use multi-tenancy up to three PDBs. If you want to create more PDBs, like four or more, then multi-tenant license is appli applicable. Applicable. Otherwise, uh, multi-tenant license is not applicable with the three pluggable databases. So use it uh, and uh, you can uh, get more benefit with the multi-tenant architecture and consolidate your environment. Also, uh, I just want to say that uh, from 21C onwards, like in 19C, you uh, uh, in, when you install the binaries, when you create the database, you, you are taking the option of uh, to create a database in non cdb architecture but in 21c onwards this actually you will not get you will have the compulsory to go with the at least minimum one pdb and the container architecture is the compulsory from the 21c onwards so i would suggest go with the uh, pdb when you migrate from 11g 12c r1 r2 to 19c or you want to upgrade 19c to the you know uh, next version so move to the pluggable database and have a hands-on on that and uh, and also use the multi-tenant architecture so going forward it will help you to you know manage all your environment it will help you to understand how the multi-tenancy work and not as well for the dbs developers and everyone can uh, you know uh, get the benefit out of this so that's what uh, uh, this is the summarization uh, if uh, there is any question i can uh, tag those questions
Hi, Shandan. How are you? Yeah, I, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I have uh, completed actually. Uh, yes, I have a question from Seeker Dan Khan. He's asking, Hi, Shandan. Why OPDB's relocation to another server or to the cloud? Do we need to copy the database files manually? Uh, see, uh, database file manually copy is not required. As you've seen in the, you know, my demo, I haven't copied my database database files, right? It is doing actually the hot clone of uh, my pluggable database. Okay, so uh, moving from, uh, you know, uh, relocation, uh, it, it is basically your hot clone. And then, uh, any questions from anyone? I'm just waiting to see if anyone has any question from this side and also checking if there's any questions from the Facebook. Uh, yes, machine, the recording will be available um, in the, uh, is being uploaded, all sessions uh, of the, uh, of the event uh, I will have it replaced. You, if you look a little bit up to the chat, you're going to see the screenshot where you're going to be able to see it. And I was showing that to Seeker and Ken in the chat to everyone that basically you will be able to watch replays of all sessions of the event until December 30 through the attendant pay, uh, tab. Uh, if you go to your agenda, you're going to see all the sessions you register to, and you're going to see the uh, replay link on each session. Uh, the sessions to show there, even if they already pass, you need to go to the calendar, register to attend the session, then that session will be populated in your personal agenda, and you will be able to see. Up to this point, we're able to upload the recordings up to the day 10 of the event, we are uploading around uh, two days every day. That means up to Monday or Tuesday, we should have everything of the recorders available and you again able to watch them until December 30. Any other questions? Any questions to Shandan? Looks like not Shandan. Thank you so much for giving the time yeah. To present to all the Asia Pacific community and now also all the community around the world they have access to the event. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Francisco. Sorry, I was uh, disconnected in between. Uh, there was some disconnection happens to this. Uh, yeah, all yeah. good. No problem at all. And thank you so much, everyone. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact also Shandan directly if you're watching the the uh, replays. In the presentations, you will be able to see the Shandan's contact information. And please feel free to contact him offline and ask questions about this presentation if that's the case. And without any more further ado, thank you so much, everyone, again. And please take care and be safe. Thank you so much again, Shandan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Bye bye. CloudDB, shaping your new normal.